Death can serve many functions in a film, from tugging at your heartstrings to leaving you pumping your fist in delight at seeing a scumbag villain finally get their well-earned comeuppance. But just because it looks like a character dies without any ambiguity whatsoever, that doesn't mean it's what the filmmakers or the studio actually had in mind. And so, following our previous video on the subject, we come to another 10 movie characters whose apparent deaths weren't quite as concrete as they first seemed. I'm Ewan, this is What Culture, and here are 10 more movie characters you didn't realize actually survived. Number 10, Damien Karras, The Exorcist. Oh look, it's another fun opportunity for me to talk about The Exorcist and its currently underappreciated sequel, The Exorcist 3. Side note, go check out What Culture Horror if you haven't already, as we tend to go more in depth on the genre there. Anyway, anyone who's seen the late William Friedkin's 1973 masterpiece The Exorcist will be aware that at the end of the film, Damien Karras dies, having sacrificed himself to vanquish the demon that had been possessing young Reagan. Karras has his last rites read by Father Dyer and ascends to heaven having had his faith restored. All in all, a somber but also inspirational end for the character. The Exorcist 3, written and directed by the original novelist William Peter Blatty from his own book, Legion, picks up over a decade after the events of the original film and is, in my view, the greatest horror sequel ever made. It's also really underseen, so it wouldn't be unfair to assume that quite a few Exorcist lovers miss that Karras makes a tragic return in the movie as Patient X, now claiming to be the Gemini killer who died over a decade prior to the events of the film. Karras actor Jason Miller didn't return in Blatty's superior, but now sadly patchwork Legion cut, but Karras' presence is a key fixture of both stories. For all intents and purposes, Karras did pass away in that fateful encounter with Pazuzu years prior, but his corpule form is inhabited for sinister purposes in revenge. Through Karras, the Gemini is able to reenact his grisly crimes, posing a heart-rending adversary for the returning Lieutenant Kinderman. Number 9. Diane, Shaun of the Dead Shaun of the Dead's Diane, played by Lucy Davis, appears to quite obviously perish near the end of the movie, even if we never actually see her get torn apart by the zombies on screen. After her, boyfriend David goes and messes everything up and then gets disemboweled by the undead horde, a hysterical Diane grabs one of his severed limbs and maniacally runs out of the Winchester pub into the crowd of zombies, hilariously professing a desire to save the very, very dead David. Given that Diane is literally surrounded by hundreds of hungry zombies, it's tough to picture any way for her to survive, especially as she's never seen again. However, the DVD release of the film included an extra which revealed, via a series of storyboards, that Diane did in fact survive the undead apocalypse. Diane explains that she used David's dismembered leg to fight her way through the crowd and then climbed into a nearby tree before passing out. After waking up, Diane snacked on David's leg for a few days and then emerged unscathed once the zombies were dealt with. And in a totally unnecessary postscript, she also reveals that she then moved to Birmingham to live with her aunt and maintains quote-unquote Christmas card contact with Sean and Liz. Number 8. Dr. Robert Neville I Am Legend Here's a wild one. I Am Legend, of course, ends with Dr. Robert Neville, Will Smith, distributing the cure to the mankind annihilating virus before sacrificing himself, detonating a grenade to illuminate the attacking fleet of Dark Seekers who threaten to destroy the cure. It's a bummer of an ending that sees the movie unexpectedly veer off into schlocky action territory, and only proved all the more infuriating when an alternate ending was released on home video, where Neville survives and instead realizes that the Dark Seekers aren't simply mindless monsters. All the same, the theatrical ending was regrettably canon as far as the movie went. That was, at least, until the other year when Warner Brothers announced that a sequel to I Am Legend was in development development, with Smith inexplicably returning despite Neville apparently being blown to smithereens. And though it would have been easy to assume that Smith would simply play Neville in flashbacks or the film itself would be a prequel, nah, it's neither of those things. It's actually been revealed that the sequel will go the uncommon route of throwing out the theatrical ending and accepting the alternate one as canon. 
It certainly is strange and potentially confusing decision given how the majority of people who have seen I Am Legend are likely only aware of the ending that's actually in the movie. Yet, given how the alternate ending is near universally agreed to be superior, it also makes sense in its own way. Number 7. Davy Jones, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales Death, admittedly, has hilariously little meaning in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, but at least Davy Jones, Bill Nye, is an awesome enough antagonist that it's tough to blame the filmmakers too much for wanting to resurrect him. Jones dies in the third film, at World's End, when Orlando Bloom's Will and Johnny Depp's Jack stab him in the heart, sending him to a watery grave. This fate stuck for a decade until the fifth film, Dead Men Tell No Tales, saw Jones reappear in the bedroom of Will and Elizabeth's in a post credit scene. Though at first it appears that Will simply had a nightmare of Davy, the final shot shows his wet, nasty barnacles on the bedroom floor, confirming he was in fact really there. Quite how old Davy is alive again is anyone's guess, but given the series' loosey-goosey approach to logic in general, and especially mortality, it's presumably something that would have been explained with a supernatural ass pull in the sixth film, which is unlikely to happen, but you know. Number 6. Norman Nordstrom – Don't Breathe 2 don't Breathe 2 is a messy, deeply weird sequel, but the film at least seemed to tie itself off and deny the prospect of any other sequels when Norman Nordstrom, aka The Blind Man, played by Stephen Lang, perishes at the end. Quite rightly, many question the film's decision to reinvent Norman as an anti-hero given that the first film revealed him to be a thoroughly not nice person. But in the very least, he does die a sacrificial death at the end of Don't Breathe 2, laying down his life to save his adopted daughter Tara, played by Madeline Grace. Unambiguously ending the series after two movies unequivocally seemed like the right call, but because old Hollywood just can't help herself, a post credit scene shows villain Raylan's dog licking Norman's fingers, which then twitch, confirming him to be alive somehow. He's still breathing, so the title of don't breathe, it's kind of inaccurate at this point. While the critical and commercial reception to the sequel likely prevent a third film from ever happening, it did still turn a modest profit, so never say never, I guess. Number 5. Dr. Olivia Octavius – Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse One of the big pleasant surprises of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was the gender-flipped version of Doc Ock, Olivia Octavius, voiced with sure relish by the great Katherine Hahn. Disappointing it was, then, that Liv was on the receiving end of a fairly gnarly death during the film's chaotic climax, being hit by an errant 18-wheeler truck when the super collider goes all kablooey. Now, getting hit by a massive truck is almost certainly fatal, and the fact we don't see Liv again seems to confirm that. However, this was later confirmed not to be the case. A deleted segment from the sequence shows Liv waking up after being creamed by the truck, and just as the dimensional portal is about to collapse, jumping into it, therefore transporting her into parts unknown. While well, deleted scenes aren't always strictly canon, and Doc Ock was notably completely absent from the recent sequel, Into the Spider-Verse co-director Rodney Rothman did state in a 2019 interview that she was, quote, not gone from the story. A man can only dream. Number 4. Tom Hansen and Doug Penhall, 21 Jump Street the big screen 21 Jump Street reboot was a pleasant surprise for many reasons, not least that it featured a pair of unexpected cameos from the original TV show stars, Johnny Depp and Peter DeLuise, playing their undercover cop characters Hanson and Penhall. The duo are both shot multiple times during the movie's climactic shootout, with the very clear implication being that they died, quite neatly passing the torch to Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum's new generation of youthful undercover cops. But directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller did actually shoot an extra scene that confirms Hansen and Penhall survived. Despite being shot full of holes, the scene shows the wounded duo regaining consciousness and affirming that, actually, they're going to be okay. Their survival wasn't mentioned in sequel 22 Jump Street, and with a third film never really going into production, there's virtually zero chance this will ever be followed up on. Number 3. M. Bison – Street Fighter 
Now, nobody could be blamed for turning 1994's Street Fighter off the moment that the end credits roll, because outside of Raul Julia's riotous performance as villain M. Bison, what else is there to enjoy, really? At the end of the movie, Bison is given a seemingly pretty damn decisive death when JCVD's Guile spin kicks him into his own wall of monitors, which consequently go up in a gigantic fireball. And that's the end of that, except for those precious few who actually bothered to sit through the credits, who were rewarded with a post-credit stinger, as Bison's hand punches a hole through the wreckage of his destroyed base, rather lazily setting up a sequel. Said sequel never materialized despite the film's box office success, but given that Julia sadly passed away before the original was even released, it's probably just as well. Number 2. The High Evolutionary – Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 on an initial viewing of Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3, most understandably assumed that the villainous High Evolutionary was killed when his ship exploded during the climax, given that he's seemingly not seen in the movie ever again. However, following the film's release, writer and director James Gunn revealed that eagle-eyed fans could actually see Drax carrying an unconscious High Evolutionary off the ship shortly before it explodes. And more to the point, Gunn shot a deleted scene that more blatantly confirms his survival, with him being imprisoned on Nowhere by Rocket Raccoon in a rather fitting turnaround given his penchant for imprisoning and torturing animals. And number 1. Zerg – Lightyear Lightyear takes plenty of liberties with the existing Buzz Lightyear lore within Toy Story itself, such as revealing that this version of villain Zerg is in fact an older version of Buzz from the original timeline. It was a divisive twist for those people that are really into Toy Story lore, and at the film's end, Zerg is seemingly obliterated when the prime Buzz, Chris Evans, shoots the fuel he's holding, triggering a massive, presumably fatal explosion. But Disney being Disney, haha, <laughs> one of the film's post credit scenes cuts back to the expanse of space, where Zerg is drifting aimlessly as his eyes glow red, confirming his survival. And there you have it, 10 more characters you didn't realize actually survived. Any characters you think we missed here whose fates weren't as deadly as one's thought? Shout them out in the comments below. Be sure to drop the video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want more. Either way, I've been Ewan, you've been watching What Culture, and I will hopefully catch you next time. Bye!